Hey guys, welcome back. Dan here with our Mark IV Complete Kit. Um, today we're going to start putting on the steering rack, um, all the steering hardware associated with it. Uh, you can see here putting on the foot box front wall for the aluminum panel. It's one of the first panels you're going to put on the car. Um, make note that because this is, is a complete kit, that we do need to change out the aluminum panel that was on the car for the one that came with our Willwood pedal box. Once that's all set and riveted in place, we're then going to have to go ahead and start assembling the steering rack. Alright guys, here we have our steering rack. You can see that the bushings and sleeves do come separately. So what we're going to do is press one bushing in from each side and then go ahead and press in each sleeve and get this ready to go. Once that's all set, we also have to change out the end piece that comes on our lower steering shaft. The one that comes already on it is set up for the 87 to 93 Mustang power steering rack. The one that came in our kit is the one set up for the manual steering rack. So we'll just need to loosen the two Allen screws and change that part out. All right guys, now we need to install the steering rack. We're gonna go ahead and slide it into place into the tabs on the frame and line up the first bolt hole, which is gonna be on the passenger side and get that through and then go ahead and put the second bolt hole through the slotted one on the driver's side. You'll go ahead and tighten it up and we'll move on from there. All right guys, now we need to install the flange bearing on the firewall and the pillow bearing up at the top of the car. Now for the flange bearing, you're gonna wanna go ahead and make sure that the coupling side is facing inside the car and that you install this particular bearing to the outside of the foot box. So we're gonna go ahead and put it in place, put the bolts through and tighten this one up. And now we'll go ahead and put in the pillow bearing, making sure the collar is going to be facing the firewall. All right, guys, now we need to install the lower steering shaft. We're going to slide this up from the engine bay into the passenger compartment and then we're going to take the manual rack adapter, slide it onto the manual rack, making sure that you line the bolt up with the flat that's cut on the rack. All right, guys, now we're going to install our upper steering shaft. We're going to slide this through the pillow block bearing down into the lower steering shaft, making sure that you take note to install the two spring washers in the two little cutouts in the upper steering shaft to take out any excess play that might be in there. All right guys, now we're gonna temporarily install our steering wheel. We wanna take the hub, slide the hub over the steering shaft, making sure that the two flats line up with the hub, and then take our bolt and thread that in a couple ways to keep everything in place. Now once that's in, we're gonna go ahead and take our steering wheel, put the steering wheel on, and take our bolts and slide those through and tighten them up. The steering wheel can only be clocked one way, so you don't have to worry about trying to find out what bolt holes you need to line up. Now we're going to install the aluminum center section and the badge. We'll go ahead and just take the adhesive backing off and put the badge in place into the center section.
All right, guys, now with the wheel in place, we can go ahead and center our steering rack. The way you're going to do that is you're going to take your steering wheel and you want to count how many turns it goes all the way to the left. In this case, I have two and a half. And then you'll want to count back to the center and then go all the way to the right as well. In this particular case, for the manual rack that comes with the kit, it's five turns lock to lock. We're going to want to divide that in half, and that'll get us two and a half. So if we bring the wheel back to two and a half, that's going to be center on the rack. Once you have that all set, you now are going to want to take the spindles and make them as close to straight as possible visually. The alignment shop down the road will take care of the final alignment when you get to that point. Once those are set, you're going to need to take your tie rods, take the lock nuts, thread those on first, thread the tie rods on, and then slide the tie rods into the spindle and lock down the elastic stop nut that comes with them. All right, guys, with our front suspension, steering, and brakes now all in place, we're all set up here for the time being. In the next video, we're going to show you how to put in the rear end and rear suspension components. See you next time.